Hey, what's up? Today we're going to create this gingerbread snowflake. This video is part of a Christmas giveaway that I'm hosting in collaboration with XP Pen. Follow this tutorial, post it on your Instagram, and you will have a chance to win one of three drawing tablets from XP Pen. All the information you need to join is in the description down below. So yeah, let's do this. Okay, before we get started, we need to activate a few add-ons. So go into edit and then references, go into the add-ons add -ons tab and search for node wrangler and make sure that one is activated and then search for extra and activate add curve and add mesh extra objects. Okay, then we'll uh, make the cookie shape. So press shift A, mesh, extras and add a simple star. Go into the menu here in the left bottom, increase the points to six. Now press control three to add a subdivision modifier Go to your modifiers tab and increase the render to three as well. Tab to go into edit mode and then S and Z and we'll scale it down on the Z axis a tiny bit. And then press Ctrl R, add a loop cut horizontally and then move that down. And there we have our cookie shape, maybe a tiny bit down on the Z axis. Yeah, perfect. Then go into face select by pressing three on your keyboard, select the top faces and then press I to inset. And there we go. And then we can add a loop cut with Control R in the middle there as well. And then we'll right click Shade Auto Smooth. Okay, then we'll start with our glazing. So if you press seven on your numpad or you press your tilde key, your view menu will open and it will go into top view. Press tab to go into edit mode, two to go into edge select and then hold shift and then select this loop. And then press Shift D and Z, move it up a tiny bit, and then press P and separate by selection. So now we've got a new object here, and we'll go into edit mode, and we'll decrease our subdivision modifier here, and then we'll go to modifiers, and we'll add a skin modifier, and then we'll move that above our subdivision modifier. And then press Z, and go into toggle X-ray. This will make it a bit easier for us to see. And then we'll go into third select and then press A. And then press Ctrl A and we'll make this much thinner. And then we'll go back into the top, top view and then we'll scale it up. And then Ctrl A and I'm gonna make it a bit more thinner. I do think I'm gonna increase the subdivision modifier again. Now I'm gonna select all these inner verts and then S and scale them up. And then we'll follow the shape of her cookie like that. Okay. Now we can press one on our numpad or go into front view through the view menu, select our object, toggle X-ray, press G and Z, move it down. Just like that. Okay. Then we'll uh, create our pattern. So we'll press Shift A, and Mash, Single Vert, and we'll add a single vert. Make sure you're in vert select by clicking this icon here, pressing Num one on your uh, keyboard. We'll go into top view, set to toggle X-ray, and then we'll press E and Y, and we'll extrude. There we go. Now I'm going to go to modifiers, add a skin modifier. Leave edit mode, press control two to add a subdivision modifier. Go back into edit mode, select all with A and then press control A. And then we'll increase that. And then now we can see much better. And then we'll place this one there. And then we'll with control R, R add a loop cut there. Press E, X and then point one. And then select this one again, press E, X, point one. Minus. And then we can select both of these, press S and X, we'll scale them up a bit, press G and Y, and we'll move them up. There, going to move that a tiny bit more there, and then select this third, press Ctrl A, and then make those a bit thinner, even making that a bit thinner as well. There, yeah, I think that looks awesome. And then we can toggle X-ray with GZ and we can move it up, go into front view. We can make it the same height there. And then now we'll tab into edit mode, press A, 
And then first we press period and we'll change our period point to 3D cursor. And then now we'll press Shift D R Z 60. There. And then Shift R, Shift R, Shift R, Shift R. And then when we toggle X ray, we can select the middle hertz, press M, and we'll merge at center. And we can press Control A and make it a tiny bit thinner as well. And then I think I'm going to make everything a tiny bit thinner. There. Even making this one a tiny bit thinner as well. And then I'm going to make this one a tiny bit less high. There. Yeah. That looks much cleaner. Okay. Then uh, we'll go into front view. And then we'll... Press Shift A and we'll add a camera. Press G and Y and we move that camera back. Press zero on your numpad or through your view menu, go into camera view. We'll go into output settings. We'll change our resolution to 1920 by 1920. We'll select our cookie and then press R twice. And then we can rotate it. And then I think that is a pretty cool uh, rotation. And maybe move the cookie up a tiny, tiny bit. And then we'll add a background. So press Shift A, Mesh, add a plane, press R, X, 90 to rotate it. Period key, change your pivot point to median point. And then we're moving our background back. And then go into camera view, tab to go into edit mode. And then we'll scale it up so it covers our background. Perfect. Okay, then um, let's start adding some lights. So press Z and go into rendered view. And then we'll go into our render settings. We'll change it to cycles, device to GPU compute. We'll take the viewport samples at 128 and render samples at 512. And then we'll change our color management as well. We'll change the look to a medium high contrast. And then we'll start adding some lights. So press Shift A, a light, and add an area light. Press R, X, 90, minus. And then we can press G, Y, and 3 to move it back. Go into camera view, go to your light settings, and we'll increase the size so it covers our camera view. And then let's change the power to 1200. Maybe even a tiny bit more, 15. And then I'm going to rotate my cookie a tiny bit more to see if we can get the light to fall on it nicely. There, yeah, I like that uh, rim light. Okay, Shift A, light and add another area light. G and Z to move it up. Uh, change the pivot point back to 3D cursor. No, press RX 60 and then RZ 45 minus. And we'll change our size to 2. I'm going to change the shape to disk. And I don't think we need a lot of power. I'm just changing it to 30. Press G and Z twice to move it backwards a tiny bit. Okay, and then press Shift E, RZ 120. And then we can decrease this power to 15. Press G and Z, move it back a tiny bit. There. Okay, that looks good for now. Um, let's copy the backlight with Shift D and then Y. Change the pivot point back to medium point. Press R, X, 180 to aim it at our background. We'll uh, change the shape, the size to two, shape to disk. And then we'll see, it's way too bright at the moment, so maybe make it 500. Maybe even less, 350. Okay, we'll go with that for now. And then we'll start adding some materials, and then uh, we can always change our lighting later on. For the materials, we'll uh, start with the cookie itself. So we'll go into our shading tab. Go into camera view here as well. Okay. We'll click new and then now we're going to play around here a tiny bit 
So if you press Shift A, search, and then we'll add a noise texture. And then with the Node Wrangler app uh, add-on, we select our noise texture, we press Ctrl T, it will instantly add a mapping and a texture coordinate. Now we'll add a color ramp. There, connect your noise texture to it. And then we'll add a mix color right there. And then we'll connect that to the A and then our mix into the base color. There we go. Now we can already see our texture a tiny bit, but we're gonna add some more first. If we search and we'll add a Musgrave texture and then another mix color like that and then this mix color will go into the B and then this one goes into that one okay and then I just want to add a bump and then place that one there and then we'll connect our mix to the height of our bump and then our bump to our normal there we go now this like looks a tiny bit weird for now but we're gonna change this so we're gonna change our scale to maybe 150 yeah that looks nice now we'll play a bit around a bit with the scale of our set here so we decrease it and then we can see that it looks much better on the sides as well there we go and then I'm also going to decrease the strength of the bump, maybe to uh, around 0.25. I think this looks pretty good. Now we'll go and add some colors to our color ramp here. So if we select the dark color and we'll change that to 5A1E00. And then we'll change the white to d 99 e89 now we'll add two colors to our mix here as well so the a is going to be 803 a1b and then the b is going to be bc50035 and there it is now if we go into a rendered yeah i think that looks nice okay perfect then we'll go and give our glazing some materials so we'll call this uh, white and then we'll go into the shader and we'll make this white and then we'll change our roughness to zero and then increasing the specular to 0.8 and i now notice that if we go to our modifiers we can apply the skin modifier then we can right click and shade out the smooth and then do the same on this one apply the skin modifier and then right click shade out those smooth we now select the inside here and then select the outer ring and then we press ctrl l and then m we have linked the materials so it now has the same material if we click the icon here we can make a copy and then we'll maybe make this a nice light blue color and then we'll change just the base color to A5D9E7. Just a slight color change, but I like how that looks. We can go back to our layout view now and then select the background, go to the material tab. We'll add a new material for the background. And our base color for that is going to be BDD9E7. And then I also want to change the world colors. So we go to our world tab and we go to color and we change that to 6671AA. Okay. Now I maybe just want to decrease our backlight a tiny bit because I feel like it's a tiny bit strong in some places. Maybe make it 1100. Maybe even less, just 750. And then let's see how this one is maybe change the color a tiny bit red orangey just a slight hint 
there. And I think that's perfect. Then all we have to do is render. Thanks for joining me. If you have any questions or requests, drop them in the comment section below. I'd love to see the results, so be sure to tag me on Instagram. If you enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to like and subscribe. See you soon.